My name's Carl Watson, and I'm going to be spending the next few days on a mystery adventure tour around Catalonia in Spain. Travelling with the Catalan Tourism Board, they're gradually going to be taking me off the beaten track whilst keeping me in the dark about what we're doing, so that every activity will be a surprise. They're not going to tell me what I'm doing until like, we actually drop me off and get there. Irene was trying to get me to guess what we are doing, and yeah, I couldn't guess that at all. I feel like, you know, that adventure movie. Oh, goonies. Yeah, I'm curious to see what kind of activities they've actually signed me up for on this trip because when they emailed me about it, they were like, oh yeah, we've looked at your YouTube and Instagram, we've seen the kind of things you've done before, so we've kind of based the trip around that. And I was thinking, yeah, but I've done some scary shit in my time. <laughs> like, you know, the bungee jumps and stuff like that were terrifying. And I also had to email them going, just so you know, the last time I went skydiving, my shoulder dislocated mid-air. So maybe if we stay away from any high impact things where something like that can happen again. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine. That was fucking terrifying. I think the reason the tourism board are putting trips like this together is to sort of show off what else there is to do in the region because you know Barcelona everyone I know has been there says one of their favorite cities in Europe if not the world but you often hear about it in the news in terms of over tourism and so I know we're going to be landing there and then maybe go to some tourist spots but then gradually getting more and more off the beaten track I think that's a rough idea but again it's a mystery trip I don't know so it's going to be outdoorsy it's going to be active but that's all I know so far now, full disclaimer, this is a paid trip. They're paying me to go on this trip. And if you followed my channel for years or if you're brand new to it, pretty much all the trips I do are paid for out of my own pocket. Um, it's only been this year where I've had like a couple of freebies and this little paid experience now. But bear in mind, they're paying me to make a video and they're not paying me to like because I still want this to be an open and honest uh, video about my experience because if I just go, oh, everything there is perfect, you should book a ticket now, then what's the point? You may as well press stop on the video right now. So still want to be honest about everything that we do. I'm sure it's going to be an amazing time because obviously they want to show off <laughs> their region. But yeah, I'm flying off tomorrow and all I know is I've got to meet Irene from the tourism board at the airport and that's it. That's all I know. So I'm just going to have to get on the plane and see what happens. Okay, I have arrived in Spain and I've met up with Irene here. Hi. And yeah, we're in the car. We're driving for an hour, but I don't know where we're going. Don't know what we're doing, don't know where we're staying yet. Um, which is exciting because I'm always the one who plans everything. So it's kind of cool just not knowing where we're going. And Irene here, I asked her and she was like, I can't tell you anything. I can't tell you anything, sorry. <laughs> so don't ask. <laughs> it's quite late in the day because my flight was delayed coming out. So it's like, it's like half five, like latest, not, not Spanish late, but you know. <laughs> so I don't know what we're going to be doing, but I guess we're going to find out in just a few minutes. We seem to be driving towards a theme park. <laughs> Irene still won't say if that's what we're doing, but if we are, it's a pretty awesome start to a trip doing, going straight to a theme park. All right, so we've arrived for our first activity of this mystery adventure tour, and the last thing I ever would have guessed was a theme park, uh, which is awesome. We're just here for the evening, but we're gonna go run around do as many rides as possible, including what I believe is the biggest roller coaster in Europe is right in this park. I'm excited, this is not what I was expecting at all. I guess it's at the whole point of the mystery tour, so let's go and get involved. Accelerate from 0 to 130 kilometers in three seconds. So you're basically sitting there and it's like, ah! and it was, it was insane. Prepared to tell. It's not like you get a little bit wet, it's like you've just jumped in the water. Anyway, on to the next ride. Hope there's another fast ride so we can dry off. So we've just done the longest roller coaster in Europe and probably the best. The drop's not too bad, but when you go back up, the G force is in in the chair, but it was so good and we were drenched from the previous ride, but now we've dried out. A little bit like wobbly after that one, it was intense. Because 
first we get the fast track pass and it's late in the day, it means we've got to do every roller coaster back to back to back. We're pretty beat, but we've got one more to go, which is the big drop one here. So yeah, very random kind of like poof, start to the trip. We were in there till like nearly 10 o'clock in the evening and then we went for food after that and I was pretty tired so I was like, we're gonna go for loads of nice meals, I'll put the camera away and of course as soon as you put the camera away, the best thing ever happened. So this meal was incredible, it was like, not like tapas but like a taster meal, they just bring out lots of dishes for you guys to share and try out and it was just, it was insane, it was so so good. And we were there pretty late, we didn't get to the hotel to like maybe nearly one o'clock, I want to say. We're in a town called Roos, and the hotel we're at is pretty, uh, what was it, well, we're at Hotel Centre Roos. Uh, and like, when I saw on Google Maps, it was saying like 57 euros a night or something, so it's like pretty standard hotel, nothing too fancy. Which is good actually, because there's a tendency when you're doing a press trip that they sort of book you into a five-star hotel, so you can go like, oh, look how amazing everything is. But whilst that could be nice and fun for me, in terms of the audience, people might watch and go, that oh, looks lovely, but I'll never get to stay there. So we're staying in a different place each night. Um, so maybe a will turn to five-star, I don't know. But we're about to go down for breakfast and then we're gonna hit the road and Irene just said, yeah, bring all your outdoor gear, your walking shoes, your swimsuit, just everything. So I don't know what I'm getting into today. So all I know so far is we're not heading to the beach because the beach is behind us and we're heading up into the hills. Where actually are we then? Where, Where we are now? Yeah. In La Musara, that it's like a little town, but the region is Prades, yeah. the mountain of Prades. Mountain of Prades, Serra de Prades. So what's your name? I'm Carles. Carlos? Carles. Okay, Carl and Carlos, this is easy. <laughs> are you going to tell me what we're doing today then? Well, we will visit a uh, cave, if you, okay. if you are Sweet. ready for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, we will go down to the river, yeah. and we will visit uh, some kind of stream pools as well. Nice. And depending on the weather, the weather, if you want, you can you can swim a little bit as well. Okay, cool. So, hiking, caving, stream, and maybe a swim. So, perfect. Why not? Let's go. Let's do it. It's like a big slit into a rock. Okay. For millions of years ago. Someday we'll fall. <laughs> yeah. Better. Hopefully not today. Not to be. <laughs> we'll be in the in the easy part because uh, farther from, from there, we, we would need uh, special equipment. Art. Modern art. <laughs> yeah. It's like uh, the Christmas. Yes. yes. Oh, yes, yeah, so nativity. Yes. Jesus Christ's birth. Yeah, nativity. Yeah. It's the most random nativity scene Same I've ever right? seen. <laughs> this is the place where we can go a little bit inside. Oh, it's definitely like, something I wouldn't come here and do completely by myself. <laughs> that would be stupid. You have to be careful in order to know how to go go back. <laughs> yeah, and go out. yeah, yeah. But that's why you're here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Boom. All right. Let's go. The shapes, because of the action of the water, for for centuries. Every drop of water has some, some sand, some sediments. Okay. And after a million years, drop by drop, little by little, you get that. It's like through there, you can keep going. And then you say it goes for like another kilometer as well, like if you have the equipment. I'm not sure, but I think four or five hundred. Four or five hundred meters. Here, yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> This'll do for us. So we came out. <laughs> we made it. We're alive. <laughs> yes. Where's Irene? Oh, she's alive too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get lost in the game. You like it, Irene? We love it. Yeah. Much better than beach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we're now hiking down to the pools. So we're gonna go around hopefully three different pools and maybe go for a little dip. This one is completely dry, but we will find others with water. Better than nothing. <laughs> 
it might not be flowing hard right now, but it's still pretty beautiful. This whole area kind of reminds me of the Blue Mountains in Australia, a couple hours out of Sydney. Oh, that way? Oh, yeah, I'll get you. Oh, wow, shit. <laughs> Now that is just incredible. Didn't really know what to expect, but this completely exceeds it. It's beautiful. I'm gonna go get in. Oh. Oh. Takes your breath. <laughs> beautiful, but it is actually really, really cold. <laughs> You like it? <laughs> how was how was swimming? Uh, freezing, <laughs> Ex extremely freezing, like burning. My skin was burning. It's a very special place. Yeah. What a gorgeous place to come to. We're only halfway through the day, so I don't even know what we're doing this afternoon yet. But it's gone pretty well so far. Okay, what's the name of the village? Welcome to Prades. <laughs> Very nice. We went for lunch in Prades before starting the afternoon's activity, which was simply a guided tour of the village. Perfect. Okay, so Good village tour. Village tour. <laughs> <laughs> village tour. Yeah. And just say, and what's your name just for the camera? Carlos. See, it's like. Uh, you know. The same as you. Everybody, everyone's name's yeah. easy to remember. <laughs> just Carlos, you know. That's true. During the morning. <laughs> Carlos showed us around different parts of the village, explaining the history of the area, including how some of it was damaged during the Spanish Civil War between 1936 and 1939. In the Civil War, we received a lot of bombs <laughs> yeah. from the planes, and Franco's army yeah. destroyed all the old church, and we wrote well, that part, they destroyed that part, right. and we you rebuilt it. were already rebuilt it. It's an ancient clock. So basically we're in the clock tower and people don't usually get to go on here but we can't touch anything because otherwise we'll mess up the whole clock for the whole town. But this is where it's all controlled from. You hear that sound, Irene? That's the sound of your life just ticking away. <laughs> <laughs> so what date was this tower built again? Yeah, it's the same as the village, it's uh, 1092. 1092, yeah. okay. So you're saying this is the used to be a defensive tower? Yeah, wow. here uh, the soldiers can see everything. So and then, yeah, coverage. And, yeah. me, and then if you want to, <laughs> to advise people, yeah. you only need to, to clock the bell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. Everyone can listen it. Yeah. And that's the reason why we have that one. To yeah, or? yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, we explain people. There is a speaker that we explain to the all villages. Yeah. Maybe we are going to do that or okay. fire, fire in that place. Right. Okay. So the speakers are <laughs> yeah. for emergencies. To yeah, to explain, explain the village yeah. what is happening. Yeah. Do so you do like birthday messages or anything like no. that? No. <laughs> you need to pay. You can do it, but you okay. pay. Okay. <laughs> you have to pay for a birthday yeah. message. You have to pay for it. Yeah. Just happy hour at the pub. Come on down. <laughs> Wait for the bell to ring, it's five o'clock, it's about to go. <laughs> so we've just done a short 40-ish minute hike up from town to this old church with an amazing view of the valley. And this, you know, I was saying it looked like the Blue Mountains earlier, this really looks like the Blue Mountains here. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to my house. It's your house? Yeah. Oh, I love what you've done in the place. Really humble, <laughs> you know. Here stayed the second priest of Cristobal Colón. Okay. The priest uh, went to Cristobal Colón to discover America. Okay. He earned a lot of money and when he came back here, he decided to build that. I'll have a try. It's not the first of the day, never rang a church bell before. Here we don't have lights. Because it's forbidden. Oh, wow. I'm going to wait there quite now. <laughs> 
you feel like you are welcome to, that. Welcome to my house. You see the ceiling? Yeah. I, I already filmed that. Good work. <laughs> and we'll go for a walk around the back of the church. Be careful. Okay. So over there is Vals, which is the most important place in all of Catalonia. Correct. This is where Irene's from. Uh huh. Every and time, when... every time we see a sign saying Vals, like Vals. <laughs> <laughs> and where the human towers and Calzotada was born. Yes. See. <laughs> after, after one. Do you know, last night I was staying in a regular hotel and I was like, oh, it's cool that they've just put me in a regular hotel. It makes the trip more regular and more, you know, relatable to the audience and things like that. Well, tonight I'm staying in a freaking tree house. <laughs> it's unreal. Let's wait till you look inside. Got my own little gate. Just make sure no plebs come in. It's a stairway up. <laughs> come on round. Got my own little balcony. You know, I'm gonna have to find some beer somewhere. I'm gonna have to drink, have a drink up here. It's too good. So, got a nice double bed with a mosquito net. Looks nice. Got a fireplace, and then I've got a jacuzzi. <laughs> you know, I love I love press trips sometimes because you just you get amazing things like this. And I've checked into the spa for an hour. You know, just just so I can relax, take it easy. Welcome to Rancho Relaxo. Remember, you can't spend a relaxo without relax. Yeah, I'm just gonna jump up, film on my phone so my camera doesn't steam up. Uh, but yeah, I'm just gonna jump in the spa for now for dinner. <laughs> All right, good morning from my little tree house. I had such an amazing night's sleep, it was really good. So I just had a quick look online at how much this place costs. And it's 161 euros a night for the treehouse with a jacuzzi. Which is a little less than I actually expected. I mean, if you're on a budget backpacking trip, then obviously, you know, you're not gonna be spending that money. But if you're here on a short break and don't mind splashing out a bit, you know, it's not extortionate. It's actually, it's actually all right for what you get. This is the weird part of the day where I don't know what's about to happen. I don't know what we're gonna be doing this morning. And it's, you know, am I gonna be sort of like canyoning where it's gonna be, you know, hard work and I'm gonna to have to psych myself up. It's gonna push myself or is it just gonna be something fun and easy? And yeah, I don't like the not knowing. I'm gonna be honest, I don't like it. Uh, I much prefer to know, right, you are doing something tough and I can, you know, get myself ready for it, uh, sort of <laughs> psychologically. I think this afternoon will probably be quite chilled, but I think this morning is going to be something a bit more full on. That's my gut feeling. Alright, it's time for the first activity of the day. There's a huge dam here, so we're at some kind of reservoir, and I'm wearing swim shorts, so it's got to be water based, guessing the reservoir. I'm not gonna tell me, not yet. No, sorry. I always wait until the last minute. <laughs> so it's more exciting. <laughs> but I think you can figure out something. Well, yeah, it's in the reservoir. I'll figure that out. In the reservoir. What can you do in a reservoir? You can swim, you can kayak, you can go on a boat, you can jet ski, you can wakeboard. And what do you want to do? Whichever one I say, oh, I'd like to do that. I'd be like, yeah, it's not that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I can see some kayaks. <laughs> Looks like kayaking to me. Looks like. <laughs> so Irene's not just the guide, but is the kayak guide. And the kayak guide. So you know where we're going. For me, it's one of the most beautiful places in Catalonia. Okay. So this is the reservoir. Yeah. But the village, it's a tiny village in the top of the mountain that we just passed through. Yeah. That it's called Siurana. And, well, it has legends about the princess that died there. You know, it's like a fairy tale village. <laughs> The 
this has turned into a very relaxing morning. It's drifting around the reservoir, at the village up there. There's no one else here actually, so it's very, very peaceful and quiet. Like, when we stop kayaking for a second, it's just no sounds whatsoever. Like that. <laughs> it's really romantic. <laughs> but you're stuck with me. <laughs> Kayaking is one of those things that's fun to do, but doesn't always make the most exciting video. It's just like, and here's a shot of me paddling, and here's a shot of Irene paddling, and here's a shot of me paddling again. Here's a close up of the paddle going into the water, and cut to the wide, and done. So, good start to the day. Actually, if I knew this is what we we're going to be doing, it would have been a lot more relaxed at breakfast this morning instead of worrying about what I would have been up to. I think we're going to a winery now, and then apparently this afternoon's activity is a lot harder, so let's see what happens. <laughs> gonna see a winery, gonna do it in style. Winery, <laughs> but you cannot get drunk. <laughs> I warn you. I've been instructed not to drink too much though, because we've got a very hard activity this afternoon. Well, we've got a little buggy to go and have a little tour around, and then we're gonna go down to the barrels and do a little bit of tasting, but not too much little bit so I'm in good fitness form for whatever I'm doing this afternoon that's the plan well we are in the Priorat this uh, is a worldwide uh, famous region for red wines okay full body bold very expressive. Here in this land, the wine is uh, related to something holy okay. because it came also from the monks that introduced the, the wine to the region and also for the holy mountain, yeah. which uh, is a natural park you can see behind us. It's a place that people has uh, historically go to be in contact with the divinity, with God. Sure, and yeah. And also this wine is also uh, a symbol. Does it taste like this. you're talking to the gods? <laughs> yeah. Or emblema. Yeah. Or a standard. It's uh, a star that goes to the heaven. Okay. It's this is the Scala Day in, in Latin. Yeah. It's a uh, stars to God, no? Okay. Like, stars to God. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. the song of uh, Stairway to Heaven. Stairway to Heaven. Yeah. Classic. Love yeah. that song. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Fermentation room. How many bottles again did you say you do per year? Uh, we do uh, between the 16 and 70,000 bottles. This is 115. Six, 65 mm -hmm. and 100, 130. And this 20. 20, yeah. If you focus like over yeah. there. Whoa. <laughs> so it says there, then here, uh, one year in the barrel, and then one year in the bottle. Okay. So the wine rests, and actually it's better to wait one year more, like two years in the bottle, before drinking, because the wine is something that it's alive, yeah. so it just gets better with the time. I think it's the only thing in life that gets better with the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. God, remember, don't get drunk. I've had, I've had three little sips before. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> I always just drink white wine, and so if there's one thing I'll take away from this trip is I need to drink more red wine. <laughs> <laughs> one lesson. <laughs> yeah, one lesson. <laughs> okay, so we just went to the Paranet Vineyards, which is like a premium wine you get there. And after we finished there, we've come to have lunch at another vineyard, which is Cap de Roux. Is that right? Correct. There you go. Now this one, the bottle started like five euros, um, but I've already tried some and it's, it still tastes fantastic. So if you're traveling through here on a budget, this is probably what you 
we're gonna be drinking up the roof. What have you gone for? I order a spiral, best, like vegetable spiral with pesto. And this is pesto, which I, I love pesto. I'm a crazy lover of pesto. What did you order? I just went for the uh, pasta bolognese. Bolognese, you're super original. Wait, it, was, it, just, it was the last thing on the starter menu. I mean, there were some nice salads and stuff, but something simple just sounded great. <laughs> That's actually really, really good. Well, I've gone for the pork cheek recommended by the lady who runs the place here. So, and you went for the same. It was a good recommendation. You're always copying me. You're always ordering the same. Oh, <laughs> no, you are copying me. Irene was like, you know, make sure you don't drink too much at the vineyard because we've got a big activity this afternoon. And I was like, okay. And then we come to lunch at another vineyard. <laughs> where we have red wine, a martini, and a bottle of white wine. <laughs> so, don't blame me if this afternoon goes wrong. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> yeah. We have arrived in the village of... Morera de Monsan. What she said. <laughs> and it's time for the afternoon activity, which apparently is the hard one of the day. So I'm about to find out what it is, finally. Well, I can see pictures of rock climbing. It all looks like rock climbing. It's kind of rock climbing. It's called Via Ferrata. Oh, okay. You know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently you're walking one hour to get there. We walk in to the base and I'm going to be climbing up the rock face here. Irene was just explaining this region is popular for wine and rock climbing. It's not exactly rock climbing, it's Via Ferreira, but they do have I think 6,000 different routes here, including one of the most difficult in the world. Got all our kit on. Hi. Harness is on. Getting the rope ready. Hello. <laughs> How are you? Going? I was feeling a bit nervous uh, about it beforehand, but then the thing is, the the guide we had. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, I say right up front, I'm in Spain, and it's my fault I don't speak Spanish. So if they don't speak perfect English, it's too bad for me. But on top of that, I'm actually in Catalonia when they speak Catalan, <laughs> I don't speak that. No, si trobo la, la boleta, doncs nota que la bola aquesta amb la noto. Si no la noto, és que no tinc el peu en lloc, és quan puc patinar. He basically explained to Irene in Catalan for like a good five minutes about what we're supposed to do. And then he'd look at me and be like, okay, uh, right foot here, see? And you're like, wait, what, that's it? That's I'm pretty sure you said more than that. Okay. You know? Yeah. yeah. It's like a scene straight out of Lost in Translation. Like, it was the exact same thing. He can help you. <laughs> and so, it didn't help with the nerves and, and anxiety. You got like steps and ladders and ropes and things to walk across which on paper sounds fun, but then it turned out it was really hard and really fucking terrifying. <laughs> when you get up close to it, each step's about, you know, a good meter or what apart. So you have to, you're properly climbing up. And sometimes in between steps, you need to hold onto something else and put your foot on something else and get other footholds. And you get some bits where it's such a big gap, you don't even know how you're going to get from one to the other. I was like, I don't want to be doing this. I am terrified. <laughs> I was shaking and we're right on the edge of the cliff of the mountain looking down. I don't really know what I'm doing. I can't understand what the guy is saying. And if you start freaking out, you can suddenly start freezing and curling up and it's just not going to happen. <sighs> you just got to like not think about it and just think of it like a ladder. I just keep going and trust in the harness, but this is fucking terrifying. This is for me. And like this, no problem. Okay, yeah, stretch okay. your legs. When you're doing an activity like this, and it's a bit dangerous, a bit risky, a huge part of it is communication. Go up. <laughs> Thanks. 
Is that all you said? <laughs> Not just about the, the facts of what to do, how to clip things on. There's like the emotional stuff. It's like, oh, that guy's feeling a bit nervous. You know, say things to calm him down or say things to encourage him. And when you're basically getting zero communication, it's just like, yeah, it's almost like up to you and yourself. Like, all right, you've got to get up there. You know, it's like the ultimate sports cliche, just take it one step at a time. But you just think, right, I've just got to climb up to this next step. And that's not too hard. So we can do that one, you can do the next one. And unclip here, clip on there, and just break it down to like the smallest tasks each time and just keep doing that. Basically, determination to get to the top and I thought of a beer that's keep me going. It's, it's hard to film because I just had, you know, my GoPro, which sometimes I had, and sometimes I put on like Irene's helmet. All I've got is this shaky head cam footage, which gives you no sense of sort of the vertigo that you're feeling whilst you're experiencing it. The view here is just insane. It's just ridiculous. So I'm looking forward to getting to the top where I can like properly enjoy the view <laughs> instead of just shitting myself. <laughs> How are you, Irene? I'm good. <laughs> I'm worried about you because I want you to enjoy. <laughs> Once I'm at the top, we'll be fine. How did you find it, Irene? It was hard. It was very hard. It was hard. I was suffering for him. Yeah. Because... Irene was amazing because she she knew I was freaking out. And so she didn't want to project how she was freaking out too. I'm like, they're going, how are you, Irene? And you're like, oh, I'm great, because she wants to be encouraging, so. But actually I was dying more than yeah. him. Finally, we, we, we made it. So. Yeah, well, we still got to go in the last bit. Come on. The top's, the top's there. The, the worst part has already happened, no? Well, we don't know yet. Yeah, he knows. Apreto y estiro. Aquí, apreto y estiro. And the, las camas, the ledge. No what? Come se dice eso? La cama. The leg. The leg, leg, no leg, leg, the leg. And then the very last bit was this, this chain. You had to grab to sort of get up to the top. And so once I got onto that, I just smashed it up. I just grabbed it and I was like, right, I've got this. And I went so fast. And I, I think if there was a camera at the top filming my face, you would have seen my eyes going, come on, we got this. I fucking made it. Oh my god. That was fucking terrifying. Oh, I almost feel like I'm gonna cry, just sort of like the adrenaline wearing off and the nerves and everything. <sighs> Did it. Now this view is unreal. So now we're at the top. I want to leave unclipped. I can just enjoy it. <laughs> now I've done it, this is the best moment of the trip. When? I think we're gonna walk along and back down. Certainly not climbing back down. It was a really good experience. It was an amazing experience. Yeah. And I'm so glad we I did it. We are really proud of ourselves. It's like a challenge you yeah. take up and... We did it. We, we did, did it. it, so that's the important thing. Yeah. <laughs> I push myself and I'm glad you know this is a very short trip and it could just easily be me just potting around just doing some nice things and to get to do something that I've never done before and it scared the shit out of me and really pushed me it's kind of made the trip so I'm, I'm so glad about that it's one of the best guys I've ever seen it's incredible Would I do it again? Fuck no. <laughs> no chance. All right, final morning, final full day here. We stayed at the climbing center last night because it's actually a hostel and the guide cooked us up an absolutely amazing feast. The food is amazing here. Everywhere amazing. the food's amazing. But yeah, we were staying in dorm rooms in the hostel and like I've been saying, it's great how they've mixed up the accommodation on this trip. So it's good to show different sides of what you can experience here. Just checking out the hostel and we're about to head off for today's activity. Ready for the last day? I don't know, I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know if I have enough 
energy to face up this last day, but I think it will be fun. That's the most important thing. You know what we're doing though, I don't know what we're doing. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like the, the anxiety is kicking in again for the start of the day because I don't know if we're going to do something fun, something terrifying. Uh, I don't like the not knowing, but yeah. It's the last day. I think yeah, this afternoon should be pretty easy, so. Yeah, should be good fun, should be good fun once I know what we're actually doing. My guess is canyoning because we're wearing swim shorts and you asked about my footwear. You're, you think you're going to canyoning? That's what I thought from your... Mm. Go. Good. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> hi. <laughs> we are in Covas de Francoli, de las Plues de Francoli. He's Ramon. Yeah. He will be our adventure guide. And we will explore a cave. So we will be sweet in a wetsuit. In a wetsuit. And first, first of all, we are gonna pass through dry zone yep. and then the other one it's like with water yeah. so i've been kitted out with a wetsuit helmet it's so hot in this right now so <laughs> luckily i'm pretty sure the water will be freezing so i appreciate this in a bit but right now it's like <gasps> let's go do it let's go, <laughs> let's go. There's all this prehistoric stuff because in prehistoric times they used like the entrance of the cave as a place for shelter but obviously they didn't go too far in because it's only so far the natural light can get. But many many years later they discovered that the cave is like three and a half kilometers deep. So the village, the village we are right now, yeah. it's just over us. Uh -huh. So the cave is just under the village and yep. people didn't know that. No? No, okay. But now we are going to do the same route that these important people from the village in 1853 they discovered the, the cave and the water, okay? Okay. First you're just walking, but then you have to get down your hands and knees and you're crawling through. Are you okay? I'm great, yeah. I feel like John McClane and Dino are going through the airports. <laughs> Okay, so we're just beneath the old well in the town. Up there. And Irene here is having to translate everything. Hello! Me. <laughs> so she's doing a very good job. Well, I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> crawl through the water. Ah. Look at buddy, what are you doing through with us? Okay. <laughs> I feel like, you know, that adventure movie. It's called Goonies. This is like a cross between the Goonies, Die Hard, and Shawshank Redemption where he crawls through a pallet of shit. <laughs> We're about to go and climb, slide down head first further into the cave, so let's give it a go. Let's go. Let's go. Hey. See, we see Oh, wow. Been crawling through tiny caves and then walking through a big, well, a bigger cave through the water. Of course this. Sometimes the water was like waist high and we were just walking through and it was absolutely beautiful. So this is the therapy wellness room. Yeah. So we've uh, put our mud mask on sort of to exfoliate the skin. I will be charged like 60 euros in a therapy <laughs> center but no, here it's for free thanks to Ramon, our guide. <laughs> this is so much fun. <laughs> I'm glad we have a guide. I wouldn't come down here by myself because you just get lost and die. So, uh, but this is really, really cool. So, let's go. Let's go. Now we are going to enter to the last room. 
uh, is the biggest room uh, you will visit? Or some some boy in a for a all of this morning, Irene was trying to get me to guess what we were doing, and yeah, I couldn't guess that at all because I didn't think we'd be going into a cave, uh, crawling through the water and mud. But it was fantastic. You feel like you're a little explorer, adventurer, like diving into this water. And you're now just covered. <laughs> yeah, out. Oh, I have free mask for my <laughs> my skin. <laughs> How's my face? I think you look handsome. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> but, um. You look. Being covered in shit is a good look. <laughs> <laughs> it's not shit, it's, it's a magical yeah. mask. After cleaning up from the caves, we had one last quick stop to finish off the trip, which was the coastal town of Tarragona. We met up with Chloe, who runs the blog Wanderlust Chloe, and is out here at the same time as me with the Catalan tourism board, just on a different itinerary. I think Go this is it. like a surgical kind of operation that we're about yeah. to do. Like no. we're maybe going to bring the crab back to life at the end of it. <laughs> going to make the first incision. So I've managed to get lots of meat out. That's a meal right there. Enjoy that. Mm. I have no idea what I'm doing. Carl, teach me everything you know. It's a surgery. It won't take long. <laughs> <laughs> Once we'd had lunch, we had a quick late afternoon tour around the town. You had lunch in a square that's a corner of an enormous Roman square, which was the government of North Hispania, we were the capital, and the cathedral that's on top of the town is the place where we had the Roman temple. The town is beautiful and there's so much history here. It's like, you know, an old Roman town that's been built on top of and built on top of. That's 10 floors, 10 levels, which is that one, the big one. Yeah, that kid at the top looks like, mommy, I want to get down. <laughs> then we drove back to Barcelona, where we went out for our final meal together before I fly home first thing in the morning. We've been like treated really well with food in this trip, so we decided to like, just rough it a bit for the end and just come to a Michelin star restaurant. Do you get like, how many different stars can you get from Michelin? I'm oh, not three, and how many has this got? I think one. One, so yeah, just a one star, you know, don't go crazy. <laughs> You know, Irene and the others from the tourism board just made it such a fantastic experience. You know, driving around with someone I don't know for four days could have been a very awkward experience, but we just had a really good laugh, really good time, so it made it like a really, really fun four days. Have you enjoyed yourself? I think I really enjoyed. I mean, you think? It's, <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I think it's been an awesome experience. I just was worrying uh, about you enjoying this trip. It was my goal, and I think. You, you did, uh, so that's the most important thing, I, I just... You achieved your goal, don't worry. I'm grateful. That... <laughs> it's been three and a half days, but it feels a lot longer. It's been a really intense three days because from 8 to 12, you just <laughs> don't stop. You don't have like a moment to break. Yeah, uh, yeah. There's no moment. It's actually nice just sitting here doing nothing. Chloe actually was asking her what was the favorite activity That's a that I did question. and yeah I don't really have like a favorite activity we've done that hasn't been one that's been like way better than the others but there's been moments within each one that have been really really awesome. I mean the thing that stands out from the whole thing is the Via Ferrata. But to say that was my favorite thing would be a lie because it's fucking <laughs> terrifying. But like that moment at the end when I got to the top and that amazing sunset was just something really, really special. We were really lucky to be there alone. That was one of the best sunsets. It was... Yeah, the sky was amazing. Yeah. What was your favorite moment? This I don't. It's really. No, I think mm. you can get so worried about trying to put things in lists. It's and I was like, doesn't 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 matter what was the best moment. The yeah. fact that ma what matters is that you had lots of great moments, yeah. which we have. <laughs> Catalonia is like this. Uh, you have to enjoy the moment. Besides, nice. this is the moment. The entire time 
we were probably never more than two hours drive away from Barcelona so like all these places in the world that you hear are sort of quite busy if you just make that tiny extra bit of effort you can discover all these sort of hidden treasures and like have no other tourists there and there's just so many more things to do there's always so many more things to do in a place than you actually realize before you go there But anyway, after doing these sort of three press trips this year, it's back to normal service next because I'm doing a tour in Morocco, although it is a little bit different because it's the first tour that I've ever organized myself and I'm hosting a tour in conjunction with Intrepid Travel. And I can't wait for you guys to see that film. It was one of the best trips I've ever done. We had such an amazing time. And I'm not saying that just because I organized the trip. It was so much fun. And everyone in the group got on so well and Morocco was just beautiful. So that's coming very soon. And then I'm just about to book my tickets my next trip which would be Vietnam after Christmas sort of for a good old classic backpacking trip and you know the last time I was amongst a backpacking scene properly was the Central America trip in 2018. No! So yeah thanks for watching as always remember to subscribe and all that nonsense you know that by now and then yeah sit tight because the Morocco adventure is coming very soon and you guys are gonna love it so I'll see you then. <laughs>